Hello guys, welcome to um, this video here, it's a tutorial video, I'm XTC and this video I'm going to show you how to set up your own um, sorting and crafting logistics system for your very lovely home as I'm sure all of you have, I've got my own here, it's a test home right here, like a display home like <laughs> the ones you see in Ikea and I've got everything like this set up, I've got power generation, you know uh, maybe a bit overpowered power generation, but power generation nevertheless. Um, so let's get started here. This was a subscriber request, so um, here you go, here's the video tutorial. And I'm going to show you how basically to set up your own system. It's uh, pretty much the same design as I used in my house, so I hope you enjoy. Um, so the first thing I'm going to set up, basically um, assuming you have your own uh, set of uh, machines here all powered up and everything you know geared up I've got some overclocker upgrades and all that kind of cool stuff I've got a chest here this is going to be my input chest right so I'm going to come home after a hard day's work in the mines and dump all the ores that I've found into this chest and what I want to happen is I want all these ores to be macerated and then smelted right then sent to the appropriate chest so the ores should probably end up in this chest here all my wood, or well, I guess not here but um, yep, all my cobblestone in there and you know any th other kind of things that you know that I dump in here maybe I finished building an awesome machine and I had some leftover glass I want to dump that in there and I wanted to get sorted into the right chest wherever glass goes I don't think I put glass in here no probably not so yeah let's get started there's a few items you'll need right first of all you're going to need a bunch of these basic stone pipes very important it's a heart of your whole sorting system well not really but I guess you could say the structure um, the most important second most important thing you'll need is probably these guys and they're crafted like so yep you'll get eight of these from a diamond pipe two golden gears two redstone torches and four glass and they're very important because they're used to craft all the other pipes that I mentioned here. You're going to need one logistics chassis pipe Mark III, and they're crafted like so, with gold around a basic. And then you're going to need a bunch of logistics chassis Mark IIs, crafted with iron around a basic. And this number will depend on the amount of chests you have, so keep in mind that. And you might be wondering what's all this uh, chassis pipe business. Um, there are basically five tiers, right? You've got your tier one right here. So one slot for a module, which I'll explain what they are in just a moment. Um, hold on, let me make it daytime. Right. All right. So that's chassis Mark One. It has one slot and is crafted with redstone around a basic pipe. This Mark Two I showed you obviously has two spots. A Mark Three, a gold made with gold round, has three slots. A Mark Four with diamond round has four slots. Now this guy is a Mark Five and I will show you the recipe for that because it is crazy I go a mark 5 boom yeah that's right four blocks of diamond four blocks of gold and you'd expect one two three four you expect it to have five slots but no you're wrong he has eight that's why it's so much more expensive and to be honest I have no idea why you use eight um, I mean four maybe yeah, I guess but no idea why you use eight but you know there are probably crazy people out there who would use um, all eight of them, or even more, I guess. Um, but anyway, getting back to our sorting system, you're going to need one of these, a bunch of these, and now I'm going to get onto modules. Now, to make all of these modules, which I'll explain what they do, you'll need a blank module to start off with, and that's crafted like this. And this quick sort module, you only need one of. This is the most important part for your sorting system and it's crafted as you can see with the diamond gear which is pretty expensive right um, but this guy is the module that will pull all your items out of the chests out of this input chest right so that's very important otherwise all the items will just sit in your chest and won't do anything next you've got your provider modules you're going to need to attach these to these chests so that your crafting system can make use of the materials in your chests so that's important as well. You've got your polymorphic item sync module. Well, I should show you the crafting recipe. Like that, gold gear. 
this polymorphic item sync very similar but with an iron gear and orange die and what this module does is um, it will communicate with the quicksort module and anything the quicksort module pulls out of this chest will route to the chest which has also that item so I've got a chest full of wood if I have a polymorphic item sync module attached to this chest the quicksort module here is going to know that oh look there's wood in this chest any other wood is going to get sent to this chest. Oops, this one. Right, so that's how that works. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to grab a quick sort and that. And all I have to do is connect this pipe to my oh, to my input chest. That's all I have to do. And you see, I have nice uh, three nice spots. First, I'm going to put in the quick sort module. And exclamation mark shows you options, but there are none for this, so you just have to leave it in there. So at this point. It's going to pull out any items it has, but obviously there is no way for it to go, so it's not going to do that. Next, I'm going to hook up these chassis pipes to my chests over there. And as you can see here, I've got a nice pathway just dug out, pre-dug out, that leads straight to under my chests, right? So, all I have to do is put a bunch of Mark IIs underneath. You can see them all turn green. And if you right-click on them, you'll see they have two slots. You just have to put one provider um, on polymorphic. Um, to be honest, the provider is not necessary if you're just doing crafting system. I mean, uh, a sorting system. But if you want your chest to work with your crafting system, which I'll show you how to set up in just a moment, you're going to need one of these to provide items from this chest. Otherwise, one of these will do uh, as the quick sort module will send the items to the correct chest, just like that. So, provider, polymorphic. Provider polymorphic. So you need a bunch of these, obviously, and this is definitely something that you can do um, right off the bat after you start a new world. Obviously, it requires a bunch of resources. And polymorphic item sync provider. Okay, so the provider provider module does have options here. Um, you can switch, leave first stack. Basically, this sets what you'll leave behind. Mode normal, leave first stack. This is the mode I like to use. Leave one item per stack. Uh, this is especially useful if you uh, organize your chests like this. Whenever your crafting system uses stuff, it's going to always leave one behind. That way, whenever you shift click into your chest, it will be organized as well. So, you know, if I left one there, all this copper would go there where the copper belongs. But if I didn't, it would go up there. So that's. Um, so this is. Oops. So this is why this is useful, this mode here. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly set up all these. Most of them are done, I think. And I'm not going to bother too much about this. This is just a demonstration. Right. So now all these chests should be all good and hooked up. And ready to work with... Whoops. Ready to work with this quick sort module. All you have left to do, of course, is to connect the whole thing. So I'm going to dig out a hole here and pipe it along here just like that. Oops. And if I connect the chest to that, uh, pipe to that, you'll see it turns green. It's all good. Look at that. All my items are now getting sorted. Right? Sweet. Now obviously it's not organized because uh, they're just dumping it straight into the chest, but that's okay. No worries. Now, you see all this stuff is just sit, um, just sitting in here, not doing anything. That's because there is nowhere for those items to go. None of these chests have any of these items. So, you'll know in your system when you have something that's unique to your system, something that you haven't had before in your chests, it's going to stay in this chest and not going to get pulled out. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of ores in here, which is what we're going to sort out next. Um... You're also going to need a bunch of these chassis Mark II pipes, and you're going to make use of these modules here. I've got um, got an item sync module crafted like this, which will basically request items from the system. And then you've got an extraction module which works with machines that will extract the smelted items out of the machine for you. So you're going to work um, make use of those two together. I've got an extractor here. You'd probably use this to 
sort out your sticky resin and turn it into rubber, like this stuff. Um, you tend to leave your compressor because compressors don't have any real recipes that you would automatically want to sort itself out. So if you've got something, obviously you can put one there and configure that, but I don't have any recipes that I want to you know, put in there. Also got my macerators, induction furnaces, and for anyone out there who uses electric furnaces, um, you know, they work too. I'll just have one there to show that it works as well. And you just have to connect that up. Right now it's not going to do anything. Why? Because there's nothing in here. So that's probably why. Now, what you want to do is you want to, first of all, put extractor modules in all of these. And you want to set them to pull from the side. Because how um, industrial craft machines works is anything you pipe into the top of the machine is going to automatically go into this top slot. Anything you pump into the bottom is going to go into this slot. And anything you pump out from the side is going to get pulled out of here. Right? So if I were to leave it at the default, which is at the top, it would pull out the ores that I send in, which would be counterproductive. So that's how this uh, works. You want to make sure it's all set aside. Oops. So it will pull out your processed items. Extractor side. Hopefully you get the point after I've done this like six times. And of course for your um, electric furnace as well. Alright, cool. So now we've done that. Next we are going to put in item sync modules. I'm just going to put them in first because each one will be slightly different. Well, each different machine will be slightly different. Different type of machine, sorry. So what do you want to do with your macerators? Obviously you want to get all your ores right macerated. So all you have to do is grab all your ores, different types, um, and tell your macerator, both of them, right? You click on your item sync module and you tell which ores or which items you want to go here. And in this case you want all your ores to go in here, right? So you just basically get one of all your ores and click on it. And you'll see that items are starting to go over there. And this happens sometimes, don't worry. On your first few tries, your ores will get mixed up. But once you sort this out, um, it will sort itself out once you're done. So, you do the same for your other mace raiders if you have another one. That way both of them can uh, work. I like to have two, but you know, it's up to you. You see, more items are coming along to get smelted. And they're running out of power because of the low voltage coming from there. That's alright. Sounds annoying, I know. Sorry. Switch it off, but you'll see it's working fine. It just doesn't have enough power to keep up with the 8 overclockers, but not to worry. That's uh, not of your concern in this tutorial. So you'll see all the ores are getting sorted, but once they get macerated, they're not going to extract it, I don't think. Yeah, because they've got nowhere to go, so they're not going to get extracted. What you're going to do is you're going to request the dusts in your induction furnaces. Alright. I'll put this stuff in there. And the redstone. So you've got a bunch of dusts that will come out of your mace raiders, and they're going to sit there because they've got nowhere to go. But if you tell your item sinks for your furnaces, to put the dust in here, all the dust that get uh, macerated will go straight to the furnace, as you can see here. And once they get smelted, as you can see, they'll get pulled out, and they'll get sent to the correct chests, because there are gold ingots and iron ingots, copper and tin, and yeah, and I don't have silver ingots in here, but you get the point, right? So that's how my automatic smelting and mace rating system works. You put ores in, they come here to get mace rated, then come here to get smelted, then get sent to the chest. And that's pretty awesome, I think. That's the wrong thing to put there. And all you have to do is, once you're done, cover up your floor nicely, and you've got yourself an automatic sorting and ore processing uh, thing, <laughs> I guess, system, you could call it. Automatic sorting and ore processing system. And that's all cool, that's all ready to go. And not to forget, for your extractor, if you wanted to process sticky resin for you, 
you just have to put that in there and chuck a sticker resin in your chest. And in a moment you'll see it get pulled out. There it goes, and it's going to go straight in here. And rubber is going to get extracted and sent to my rubber chest, which I have somewhere here. There, right? So that's how this system works. And that ends this part of the tutorial on your um, sorting and ore processing system. Yeah. And now I'm going to move on to the crafting system. Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your crafting system, and there are a few components that you'll need. First of all, you'll need at least one logistic request logistics pipes to interact with your system. And that's crafted like so, with two gold gears and a basic pipe. And then you'll need a bunch of crafting pipes. If you want lots of recipes, you'll need lots of these, so just uh, keep that in mind. Glowstone and basic. Next, um, I don't know why I have these in here. You probably won't need to use these, so don't worry about them. And you'll most likely need satellite logistics pipes. And they're a little hard to understand initially, but once you understand how they work, they can be very, very useful. So I'm going to grab these. I've got some basic pipes. Nope. Might need these. And... Oh, I forgot to mention the terminus module. But I'll get to them. Chassis pipes, where are you? I have them. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's head downstairs to a little room that I've made. There's my nice sorting system. I've got a nice room down here, kind of like a basement. And I've got a few things set up. I've got power coming down here from above. All these recyclers are powered. And so are these machines here. Right? Um, as a matter of fact, let's go... Let's get a pipe down. Right. So basically, what you want to do is... You remember how we connected our chests up there? That's what we're going to do down here. We're going to make ourselves whoops, a few crafting recipes, right? So I've got some wood. And let's say, let's make a block breaker from red power. Let's see, block breaker. There we go. This is the recipe. You can see there are a few components that we'll need. Uh, cobblestone is easy to get, so is redstone. But we'll need to make sure we can craft these. First of all, we'll do the iron pickaxe. And you might say, you know, oh, this is easy recipe, but unless you keep your chest supplied with sticks, you're going to teach, you're going to have to teach your system how to craft these if you don't have any. And they're crafted from wood, and wood is made from planks. So as you can see, you have to make sure you get every recipe down. So let's get a log. Oh, they're not called logs, they're called wood, aren't they? Yep, so I've got a bunch of this kind of wood in my system, so I'm going to tell it one piece of wood will get you four wooden planks. That's fair enough, isn't it? That's standard Minecraft. And then two planks will give you four sticks. That's also standard Minecraft. Got some iron. And we'll tell the system that. I'm going to craft myself some sticks. Two sticks and three iron will give you an iron pickaxe. Cool. And then let's teach you how to make a piston. So that's easy enough. You should know how a piston is made. Like that you'll need an iron. So you have to make sure that your system knows how to grab every raw piece of material from your chests, or how to craft it. So all these are raw materials, so I'm alright. Oops. So there's your piston. Last but not least, let's put in our recipe for the block breaker. So, recipe, let's check again. Yep, so we need cobblestone. Just like that. Oops, two more. We'll need an iron pickaxe. A piston. And a piece of redstone. There we go, we've got our block breaker. Now, these crafting tables are just sitting there by themselves, they're not going to do anything. You're going to have to put crafting pipes in front of all of the crafting tables that have a recipe in them. And at the moment, Sure, these pipes are connected, but they don't know anything about these uh, these crafting tables. You have to right-click, and if they're connected to one of these tables, you can just click Import, and it will just copy the recipe from over from the table. So you have to make sure you do that to all of your crafting tables. If not, your crafting system will not know how to use the recipe that is in the table. Cool. So right now, we can't request anything, obviously. That's why somewhere attached to your system, you want to have 
one of these request pipes. And I'm going to put one right here, right click on the wrench. And in that connected system, you'll see that's how you, um, I guess, request items from any part of your system. Now, obviously, this uh, is not connected to any resource area, so I'm just going to connect this up to this area up here. And make sure you put logistics pipes at intersections. That's very important. If not, your system will get confused. Because, as you know, um, items at a buildcraft intersection will go random direction, and that will mess up your routing for your logistics pipes. And, whoa, look, now I can access all my items in my chests, which is awesome. That's uh, that's what the provider pipes up there do. If you didn't have the provider pipes, you wouldn't be able to see these, and these crafting tables would not be able to pull wood out of your chests. So obviously that's very important. So let's give this a test. Let's get a stick. We'll see, wood should come down. Oh, okay, I had sticks in there, my bad. Well, even better, we'll make a pickaxe then. We'll grab the sticks. It's already I already had sticks in there, so that's why. It's going to go in that that uh, that crafting table, and it made a, an iron pickaxe for me, and it's real, it's not fake. Right, awesome. Now, let's try and get a piston. Request. Smart enough to know what materials it needs. You'll see it pulled out some wooden uh, half slabs, half slabs, what am I saying, um, some pieces of wood to turn into wooden planks to make my piston. And you'll see that a little piece of wood popped out, and that's bad, because if you're not aware of that, if you're upstairs requesting stuff and you don't see that happen, you're going to lose that piece of wood. Why does that happen? Hmm. If you look at the recipe for a piston, you'll see that it uses p three pieces of wood. When you tell your build craft crafting table, gives you four pieces of wood. So there's one piece of wood left over that doesn't do anything and doesn't know where to go. So you better tell your system where to put leftover items. And that's where this comes in. I had an item sink, I must have put it away. But if you place an item sink module in that chest, click on it and don't put anything requested items, that's not important. If you put default route, any leftover items will route back to this chest. So if we request um, a piston again, we just see that the leftover wood will make its way back into the chest. As you see, it didn't get popped out. It's going to go up there. I can get up in time. You'll see that it ends up in the chest. And it should stay there because there are no wood, wooden planks in my chest anywhere. But if I did have wooden planks in here, it's going to get pulled out by that sorting module, as you can see, and it's going to end up in this chest with all the other wood. So that's awesome. Very uh, versatile system there. And there's my piston as requested. Now let's try and request the next piece, which was, here it is, the block breaker. It's going to grab all the materials, it's going to craft the pickaxe, the piston, and of course the raw pieces in there. And uh oh, Look, we've got a pickaxe. What's wrong? You can see it's stacked all the items in except the pickaxe. And there's your problem. Pickaxes don't stack. That's a big problem. How are you going to craft this? You can obviously take it out, but that would break your recipe, wouldn't it? So that's not how we're going to do it. So this is not going to work. So to solve that little problem we had, we're going to have to make use of are they? Satellite pipes. And I'm going to set out a very simple looking system right here. I'm going to have a chest next to a crafting table. And just to make this uh, simpler now, I'm just going to very quickly drag a pipe over here. And that's going to be a problem. Intersection. I'm just going to do that. And down there. Get rid of that. So we can use this pipe when we need to. So how do logistics satellite pipes work. Well, let's go ahead and tell this thing how to make a block breaker once again. All right, no, let's do it in here. Piston, redstone, pick, and six pieces of cobblestone. Awesome. How are we going to solve that problem of where um, you can't stack the pickaxe? Oh no, I used it. Oops. 
Let's grab a fresh one. You're going to have to make sure you have unused picks. If not, it will mess up. Right. So, all these items can stack, right? So that's cool. Let's import. Now, you'll notice that there's a satellite thing here. Why is that? That's obviously to use it with the satellite pipes. Doesn't take a genius to work that part out. But if you right click on a satellite pipe, it has an ID. Now, you can't use zero, it's not going to work. So, 19. Oh gosh. Where do I have tons of satellite pipes? I don't know. It must have some, some test in this world somewhere where it has satellite pipes. So, normally you'll probably start with one, but I'm going to go with 19 because that's the one I have left. You can't reuse satellite IDs, so that's why I've got some other pipes somewhere in this world. So, just pretend this is 1, okay? ID of 1. And if I click one of these arrows, you'll see that, oh look, satellite pipe number 19 is available in the system. And I'm going to tell it to send the pick not into the inputs. Anything in this input area is going to go straight down. And if the satellite is off, anything here will also go straight down into the crafting table. But if it's on, anything in these three slots are going to go to the satellite pipe. Pickaxe can go in the satellite pipe, and you don't go in there. And what does that do? Next time I request a block breaker, it's going to send all these four, three materials into this, and it's going to send the pickaxe to the satellite pipe, which is here, connected to the chest. And as you should know, Crafting tables can use items from adjacent inventories. So if I have an iron pickaxe there, it will make use of that in my crafting table. So you'll see, chest is empty. If I now request a block breaker, it's going to craft my piston, send my iron, redstone, and cobblestone over here into this. It's going to craft my pickaxe, go into the chest, and that way my uh, crafting table can now make use of that pickaxe and make my block breaker. And I was successful that time which is awesome. And this video is actually running very long. Um, so I better hurry up a bit. And to make use of that one chest and one satellite pipe, to save on resources, you can also do this. So you can have different crafting pipes, different recipes, that all make use of that same uh, inventory, that same chest, that same satellite pipe. So that's just a way to save on resources. And there are two more things I need to show you in this tutorial. And that is what if you have tons of cobblestone, let's just say for example, that you don't want to use anymore. So this chest is getting filled up and let's pretend that it's full and you don't want any more cobblestone to come in here. What are you going to do with it? You can't just dump it into the world and drop it as an item because if you do that after a while it's going to cause lots of lag, right? You could dump it in the lava but that makes a loud hissing sound and it also causes lag, though not as much as doing this. Um, you can hook them up to recyclers, or you could use um, antimatter relays from uh, equivalent exchange if you want, but all you really have to do is, that's going to hook up, so I don't want that. If you hook up your pipes, like so, and make use of the terminus module, oops, I keep making a mess. If you put a terminus module in here, these are, you see, terminated items, basically items you don't want. If I put cobble there as one of the terminated items, the next time a piece of cobblestone comes along, it's going to first try and go into this chest. But like I said, pretend it's full. Because it's full, um, normally it's going to stay in this chest because it has nowhere else to go. I don't know why these ores aren't going in here. Oops, I didn't put iron ore in there, that's probably why. Yeah, I didn't... <laughs> My bad. I didn't put iron ore in here, that's why it's not working. Now it knows about iron ore, and it's going to pull it out right. So make sure you have all your ores in there. And if you're using red power and forestry, make sure you have the different types of copper as well. And you may need to use more than one item sink because it may not all fit. But if it does, awesome. Um... As I was saying, um, normally, if you have no more space for your cobblestone, it's going to land in this chest and stay there, right? And eventually, it's going to fill it with cobblestone, because, you know, everyone has so much cobblestone. Otherwise, um, if you don't want that to happen, if you place cobblestone in your terminus module, 
it's going to go to this recycler next time your chest is full and you have more cobblestone in your system. So that's how you make use of the terminus module. And I'm not going to demonstrate it because my cobblestone chest is not full. And last but not least, you can teach your system how to make uh, various smelted items by using this. Using once again the satellite pipe in a very similar way to this. Uh, but this time, you're not using crafting tables. Let's say I want to teach my system how to craft smooth stone. Um, as you know, smooth stone is made from smelting a piece of cobblestone in a furnace. Right? You get smooth stone. All we have to do is put a crafting pipe on top. Nope, not on top. On the side. And you'll see why in a moment. Now, if you try and pipe something into the top, which I'll demonstrate right here, and I'll put logistics pipe here in the intersection. I'm going to use just this. I'm going to tell it that. Put in one piece of cobblestone and get a piece of smooth stone out. Right? That's all cool. I can request stone. And it's going to try and send a piece of cobblestone down into there. It's going to get smelted, but... Oh! It does work. Okay, that changed. It used to be that you had to use satellite pipes to do this because crafting pipes did not used to be intelligent enough to pull um, smelted items out from the side. But I guess now that's fixed. So, hooray, you can ignore this bit of the tutorial. You can simply hook your crafting pipes into here, which is awesome. But what if you want to have more than one recipe in here? Let's say I want to make charcoal. Wood. And there we'll make charcoal. Let's see if that works. To be honest, I have no idea. Charcoal, where is charcoal? You can click on craft to see what you can craft. Oh, it's not hooked up to the system, that's why. That's why I couldn't see it. There we go, charcoal, woohoo. Let's request, it's telling me it's successful. It's gonna send a piece of wood down. And let's see if it works. Oh, look. The wood landed in here. That's because it's pointing to the side. And like I said before, anything comes in through the side, it's going to land in the side, which is here. So that's not going to work. You'd have to have an induction furnace for every single recipe you wanted to make. That's why, I guess, this does have some use. Using a satellite pipe to do this will do the job. If you use a crafting pipe in here, because crafting pipes will pull out from whichever side they're facing. don't have to use a uh, basic pipe there, but I just used it. You can tell to put one cobblestone in to the satellite, which is nothing at the moment. Let's go with number 20. 20. And you just have to pull out stone. Nice and simple. The thing about this is, you can put another crafting pipe there and make your charcoal as well. 20 and that. And so as you can see, um, using this design you can have many, as many as four recipes going into one induction furnace. And that's obviously a lot better than crafting four induction furnaces, right? I think so. And similar deal with your compressor. You just have to, if you only have one recipe, you can use one obviously, but if you have more than one, it would be smart to make use of a satellite pipe similar to the application that was used here. Now, the thing with alloy furnaces, if you wanted to make your, uh, you know, blue alloy or red alloy ingots, let's, actually, let's do that. Oops, that's not how to spell alloy. There we go. You'll see the recipe is burning this kind of stuff in an alloy furnace. The cool thing about these guys is they're intelligent, so you can pipe it all into the front, except, um, I guess you could make it work with satellite pipes, but be honest, these guys are cheap to make and it looks kind of cool. So, if you want, you can always use this method as well to use more than one recipe with one alloy furnace, but either way, it's cool. And just to prove that it works, piece of iron, wait, let's teach it. Piece of iron and four redstone should give me a red alloy ingot. Four red alloy ingots. No, 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 one. What am I saying? One, right? Yeah, one. There we go. Unfortunately, when you've got these kind of uh, 
alloy furnaces and stuff, you have to manually input the inputs and output. So just keep that in mind. Import will not work because there is nothing to import from. There's nothing in the furnace. Let's request ourselves a bunch of alloy ingots. Successful. That's a good sign. All the redstone required and iron. It's going to go into here. And you're going to have to wait for a bit if you have recipes like this that require smelting because obviously you need to wait for them to smelt. You can't speed this up. Right. So there's my first piece. Oh, there it is. There's my second piece. And as you can see, it's working just fine. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to set up your own uh, logistics and crafting system for your home, which is a pretty long video, surprisingly. I didn't expect it to go for this long, but I guess that's what you have. Um, in this video, you can see how to make your own sorting and ore processing system and how to make your crafting system and how to get rid of unwanted items in recyclers. You could always uh, put a antimatter relay here from um, from equivalent exchange and that would work as well. So a bunch of cobblestone and junk you don't want, burn it up for EMC. Why not? So I guess that's about for this. Um, Sorry, that was really messed up. I guess that's about it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I found it very informative. I hope you did. And I guess thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.